Today I'm going to share with you 10 Eden Editor tips you can use that will save you time and help you be more efficient in the editor. Tip number one, open existing scenarios that you are working on through the launcher. So normally you just go to the editor, you choose the map that your scenario is on, you hit continue, you wait for the stuff to load, then at the top left you go to open and then for me of course I have folders set up and I go to Tanoa, I look for my scenario, just choose my scenario, I click on open, wait for the scenario to open and here I am on my scenario. So there's a more efficient way to do this and basically you do it through the launcher. I'll show you how. So here we are on the Arma 3 launcher. What you do is you go to the parameters tab and then under all parameters go to the basic and then down to where it says mission file editor. You click that box and then there's going to be a pathway that will show up. What you do here is you just click on this box here which is a browse box. A search box will open basically asking you to locate your scenario. So what I do is I go to my missions and we're going to open up the scenario that I was on previously which is on Tanoa and then you locate your mission folder and then you click on the mission SQM in your mission click on open and that sets up the pathway. Next all you do is you just click on play and the game will start up you'll see the Arma 3 logo and if you give it like a minute or so you'll be taken directly to your scenario and here we are on my scenario. Tip number two when in the editor open your scenario folder directly. Now let's say you have to add scripts or check some code in your scenario folder. So the normal procedure is to go to your Windows folder. My mission is going to be located on local disk users, Gunter Servalo, documents, Arma 3, missions, and then since my mission is on Tanoa, I have to go on Tanoa, and then drug traffickers, and here is my mission. Well, there's a more efficient way to do this. The more efficient way is to go to scenarios at the top left, and then down to where it says open scenario folder which will just open up the scenario folder directly and bypass all the folders that you have to go into. So now you could just put whatever script in your scenario folder or picture or code. Tip number three, organize your scenarios based on the terrain they are on. When you go to the open folder to open a scenario, you have all your scenarios here. Now the problem with this is obviously you can sort the list of scenarios that you've created by name or you can even sort it by terrain. Now what I mean by sort your scenarios by ter terrain is yeah you could do it this way where you get seared scenarios it might be more direct but another method is to do something like this. This is my scenario folder where scenario that I create in the editor and save it's saved into one of these folders based on the terrain it's on. So for example, if we go down to Tanoa, the mission that we're currently looking at in the editor is Drug Traffickers, which is this mission. What you could do is you can create folders and name it based on the terrain that you have missions for. So like for example, Altus, I have all my scenarios for Altus in this one folder. And same for other maps like Malden. I have scenarios for Malden in here. And Livonia. I got scenarios for Livonia in here. Stratus. Scenarios for Stratus that I built. Now what does this look like in game? In game, if you go to the open scenario folder, you could see the folders on the top left. So every folder that I have scenarios for. Unless a scenario has is for a mod like some of these are, your scenarios are not going to show up unless you have those mods loaded. So for example, I have scenarios on Livonia. Those will show up because those are vanilla maps. Altus scenarios will show up because those are vanilla maps. Malden scenarios will show up. Scenarios for Tanoa will show up. Scenarios for Stratus will show up. 
scenarios for virtual reality will, will show up. Tip number four, drag assets from the entities panel to the map. Now let's say you're building a mission at this location. You got some things built up, then you decided, you know what, I wanna go to a new location. So you go to the map, you go down over here, you choose a new location. I'm gonna build my little mission in this spot. So what you do is you go back to where your asset is, which is right here. You proceed to drag him across the map. All right, as you can see, this is stupid. Instead of dragging your character across the map like that, just go to your location that you want and go to the Entities panel and grab the character from the Entities panel. So now your character is, is here. So just understand the Entities panel, which is the left panel here, this basically just shows you what's in your workspace right here. Tip number five, right click and go here. Now this one's pretty simple. I have a little mission here. So let's say I wanted to locate the player instead of actually having to look around or find out where the player is at. Oh, here he is. That's a waste of time. What if I were to go way back over here again, build something and it says, well, I need to get back to the player to move him to another spot or something. Go to your player, right click him and go here. And the camera will take you exactly to where player is at. Now that only works if you're in the game like this and not on the 2D map like this. If you're on the 2D map and let's say you moved your camera over here and you go to the 2D map and you wanted to go back to the player, well you could still right click and go here it'll just move the camera and then when you press the map key it'll bring you to the player. Now let's say we went to another location on the map and we placed a unit of some sort. Uh, let's say we were by our player which is here and we wanted to go to where this heavy gunner is. Obviously you could just go here. There he is. So instead of having to move the camera like I want to go back to the player so I'm going to move the camera like this as you can see it's a waste of time to do that when you could just go like this right click and go here it'll take you right to it anything that you have in the panel you can go to tip number six make multiple units playable at once now let's say you're building a co-op scenario and you place your units that you want uh, for your friends to choose for your mission. You're going to do the normal thing like I'm going to edit a character, make him playable, go to the next guy, make him playable, the guy, next guy, make him playable, etc. What's more efficient is if you highlighted them all like this, draw a box, right click one of them, go to attributes and under object control set them as playable. Hit OK and now they're all set to playable. Now in the entities panel you have each one of these is set to playable. Now let's try something else. If we delete all these guys you chose a squad. Let's say we chose an assault squad and you wanted these are gonna this whole squad is gonna be a bunch of your friends all together in one squad as you the leader or something like that. You know that in order for them to be able to play your mission that you have to make them playable. So what you do is you could do like I just did where you right click them all, go to attributes and then hit playable. You can also do it through the entities panel. 
So if you click on one unit, hold down left shift, and then click the top one that's not playable yet, right click it, go to attributes, you'll get the same option. You just hit playable, hit OK, and now they're all playable. Tip number seven, double click to place assets. Now as you all know, you can take assets from here and place them and so forth. You could also just double click the screen and you get the same asset panel. So you have your F2, F3, 5, 6, and you can place your assets that way. Now the way this works is just click on the asset you want, hit OK, and you can place whatever you want. Double click again. This time I want a car of some sort. How about a prowler? And there you go. This is not as efficient in my opinion as just to just drag and drop something like that. But this is actually the old method that was used a lot and only in the first game, Operation Flashpoint. The game was nothing but a 2D editor like this. There was no 3D editor. This is just one option to place objects at. But the thing is, wherever you click at, that's where that asset is going to be at. Tip number eight, customize a unit's loadout. Gear and everything, gear, weapon, etc., is limited to what's already on them. So if you wanted to customize their loadout with weapons, gear, equipment that they have, just click on the character, the unit, right click, and go to edit loadout. And from here, Arsenal will open up, and you could change whatever they're wearing to something else. You could change their gun to another type of gun. You could change their uniform. Tip number nine, automatic grouping. Now when you place assets on the map and you place them next to another unit, you could see that they're automatically grouped to the main unit. What does this? I mean, it's not a bad feature, but if you don't want that, here's what you do. You go to settings at the top, and then you go down to preferences, and then you go down to misc, and where it says automatic grouping, uncheck that box, press OK. Each unit that you place now is an individual unit and not automatically grouped, and you just wanted to place assets, then you could do that. And if you wanted to group these guys, let's see, we had another one. You wanted to group these guys to this guy, and you basically just highlight them all until they're highlighted, like you see here. Right click them go to connect and then group two and you'll get this line coming off your cursor and you connect it to this guy and you just click on this guy and now they're grouped tip number 10 use the area widget to resize triggers what is the area widget the area widget is this right here so for triggers normally you place a trigger down with no size you could double click and change the size by doing that and you'd have that a better method instead of having to open it and mess with it you could press your spacebar which will switch to the one that you want and you'll get this kind of dotted perforated line around the trigger and you just click it and you could resize the trigger to what you want. So on the ends, you could pull it back and forth and you can even rotate it and set the trigger to what you want. 
Now obviously if you wanted a perfect square you would have to edit it and if you would want it to adjust the height you'd probably want to do something like that. But in terms of squareness or what have you you can adjust it like this to what you want. It's more customizable.